not. Yes, believe it or not. Fascinating pages from the amazing radio sketchbook of that famous finder of flawless, fantastic, flabbergasting features, Bob Ripley. And here speaking for Bob is Gregory Abbott. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Believe It or Not Radio Auditorium, where each day we present unbelievable oddities from the famous drawing board of Bob Ripley. And now we open Bob's radio sketchbook to our Believe It or Not quiz question. And what's the brain twister for our listeners this time? Well, today, Bill Griffiths, Bob asks his listeners to tangle intellects with this one. What war was fought in India because of Greece? Oh, now, wait a minute. Did you say, what war was fought in India because of Greece? That's the question, and we'll give our listeners Bob Ripley's answer at the close of today's Believe It or Not program. And uh, here's a hint that may help. Uh -huh. The Greece we're talking about is not a country. Oh, well, I'm afraid that doesn't help me much. <laughs> well, keep trying. Okay. But suppose now you tell us what Bob Ripley has on his fabulous drawing board. Today's Believe It or Not drama proves that blood is thicker than water, especially muddy water. And you'll see why when we present Bob's sketch in exactly 60 seconds. First, though, here's a man with a message. While we here in America prepare to celebrate a sumptuous Christmas, the people of Western Europe face the grimmest winter yet since the end of the war. As one of the few countries in the world with enough food to feed its citizens, the United States is being looked to by Europe's men, women, and children for help in their hour of need. For our part, we are seeking to supply Europe's minimum needs by shipping overseas as rapidly as possible 570 million bushels of wheat. This, despite the fact that our own wheat crop has been off by 900 million bushels from the previous year's record. That is why you and I are being asked to cooperate with the Citizens Food Committee in the observance of Meatless Tuesday and Eggless Thursday. That is why we are asked to go easy on bread, baked goods, and the expensive cuts of meat, because it will help us to conserve badly needed grain. By saving wheat, by saving meat now, we will help save the peace in Europe and the rest of the world for the years to come. And now back to Bob Ripley's Believe It or Not Radio Auditorium. For today's Believe It or Not drama, we must first go back to a small town in Texas in the year 1909. We walk along a little side street edged with small, neat homes, each with its trim front lawn, its flagstone walk. Everything here seems a picture of peace and contentment. But in the front parlor of one of these houses, there is worry and heartbreak as two brothers, John and Albert Young, speak quietly together. I tell you, Al, a thing like this makes a man feel pretty awful. I've failed at everything I've ever done. First the store in Baton Rouge, now the crops and the farm. Mm, maybe you ought to get out of Louisiana, John. Move here to Texas. No, there's nothing wrong with Louisiana. I'm I'm just an all-round failure. Any man that brings a child into the world and then can't support it, his own son. How's me feel today? How'd you expect her to feel? She'd have been better off if she'd never married me. Mm, she doesn't think that way. After everything else, not even to be able to be a mother to her own child. Helen and I will treat him just like her own. You know that, John. Sure, Al. I know. Guy's lucky to have a brother like you. And listen, I want you to do just that. Treat him as if he were your own. I just see No, I mean, let him think so, too. Mm. He was born in this house. He'll go up in it. I don't want you to ever let on that you're not his real parents. You think his mother like that? I think May wants it that way, too. What's the use of the boys knowing his own father couldn't even earn enough to feed no, him? No, 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 don't stir on that again, John. All right. Well, we'll be getting out of your way soon. Stay as long as you want. It's nice of you, Al, but I, I know you're crowded here. Baby's a month old now. In another week, May and I'll go back to Louisiana and... Try to start over. It'll be just as if we never had a son. And so John Young returned to Louisiana after leaving his baby with his brother. Ten long years passed, during which time John and his wife lost contact with his brother and their child. We find them now in their home on the banks of the Tensas River in Louisiana swamp country. John is just sitting down to the evening meal after returning from a long journey. You couldn't find any trace of them, John. No, nothing, May. I talked to the neighbors, the postmaster. How about the minister? Yes, him too. They all say the same thing. Helen and Al moved away from the town three years ago. Nobody knows where they've gone. We should have gone to live in Texas. We never should have come back here. No, May, it's, it's all my fault. If I hadn't had that fight with Al five years ago, we, we wouldn't have lost touch with him. 
They'd let us know where they were going when they moved. Isn't there some way we can find them? Oh, we've never stopped trying ever since this farm started to pay. I don't know what else we can do. Oh, I suppose we can't blame them. After all this time, they'd have no way of knowing we'd want our son again. Our son. Now, me. I'm sorry, John. But it just seems like God shouldn't have done this to us. Think of it. We'll never know our child. We'll never know what he looks like, even. May, I've got an idea. I've got enough money to buy a bigger farm, some place out of this swamp country where it's not so lonely. Wouldn't you like that? No, John, I, I think I'll just stay here. But why? I don't know. Seems like it just wouldn't be any use. Be different if we had our little boy. But it's you I'm thinking of. I've been here this long. No sense moving now. I'd have liked to have made a nice home for the child. But it just don't seem to matter anymore. It just don't seem to matter. And so that lonely couple, John and May Young, continued to live on their little farm on the Tensas River. They had no neighbors and few friends. For no one ever came into that desolate and dangerous swampland except now and then a few fishermen working their way up through the shallows close to the riverbank. Like the two young men who were there towards evening on a day in 1937. How you doing, Frank? I've got my basket nearly full. I'm not as lucky as you are, Hubert. I can't seem to get a bite. Well, after all, I'm the visitor. I guess these Louisiana fish think they have to be nice to me. Well, whatever it is, that's some catch you've got. My birthday present from the Tensas River. Hey, is this your birthday? Yeah. Oh, darn mosquitoes. <laughs> Say, this is pretty wild country we've gotten ourselves into. You bet it is. And don't get back more than 10 feet off the riverbank either. Why? Well, this is solid ground. Back in there is all swampland. You'd sink like a stone. No kidding. Come on. Let's go on up that next inlet, huh? Maybe I'll have better luck. Oh, you go ahead. I'm doing all right here. Okay, you, but see you in a couple of minutes. Right. Say, wonder what that is back there through those trees. Looks like a pool. Maybe fish in it. Hey, Frank! Frank! Can't hear me. Oh, well, go and have a look for myself. Before I'm through, I'll catch all the fish in Louisiana. Hello! Hello! Frank! Frank, where are you? It's so dark. I can't see anything. Frank! I'm lost. Help! Help me! It's mud. I can hardly walk. I, I can't see. I can't walk any farther. The mud. I, I'm sinking. Help! Help! About ready to turn in, me? I think I'll sit up a while longer, John. Well, guess I'll get some sleep. John, listen. Hmm? What is it? I thought I heard something. A cry. Oh, maybe a bird. That's no bird. It's coming from the swamp. We'd better go and have a look. Yes, you're right, me. There's somebody out there. It's, it's, it's coming from over this way, May. Keep on the path now. Don't slip. I'm all right. There. There he is. It's a young man. Oh, he's halfway down in the mud. Oh, be careful, yeah, John. Hang on to my hand. There's a rock. I'll put my foot on. Oh, pull him up. There now. Lean down on the path. Oh, poor fella, he fainted. And look at those mosquito bites. There's going to be swamp fever if I know anything. Uh, come on, May, we've got to get this fella up to the house. Poor boy, he's still asleep. Seven days since we picked him up in that swamp. Yes, his fever ought to be breaking soon. I wonder who he is. So do I. His friends, his family. Why, well, it must be word to death. Yes. His family. You know, John, he, he must be just about the age uh, our boy would be. Uh, what? What? Look, well, he's opening his eyes. What, what happened? Oh, take it easy, boy. How do you feel? Uh, not so good. Well, you've been very sick. We found you out in the swamp. Swamp? Oh, yeah. Frank warned me. That mud's like glue. 
Thanks for saving my life. Well, no need to thank us, my boy. Uh, Frank, is he your brother? No, just a friend. I was visiting. I only asked because we knew somebody must be worrying about you. Yes, we, we couldn't let anybody know your family. Oh, my family won't be worried. They won't know. They're back in Texas. Y you come from Texas? Oh, yeah, I was born there. I'll sure be glad to get back. Wait till Dad hears what I got myself into. And on my birthday, too. Your... your birthday? Sure, the day I got lost. That was my birthday. John! My boy, what... what is your father's name? Al Young. I'm Hubert Young. John! John! Did you hear what he said? I heard me. The miracle has happened. This is our son... Yes, that boy, Hubert Young, who had been brought up knowing nothing of his real parents, actually was restored to them when they saved him from death in the Louisiana swamp just outside their home. Believe it or not. In exactly 60 seconds, we'll be back with Bob Ripley's answer to today's Believe It or Not quiz question. Meanwhile, here's an important Believe It or Not that concerns you. This past Sunday marked the anniversary of a terrible lesson we Americans had to learn about the importance of vigilance in the protection of our country and its heritage of liberty. For it was the anniversary of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. But vigilance is not simply a matter of military preparedness. Today there are those inside and outside of our country who challenge seriously the democratic idea with its emphasis on the individual citizen. Our answer to this challenge should be to make democracy work better than ever in this nation of ours by practicing it in our daily conduct, by keeping better informed on the affairs of the day, by taking an ever more active part in the political life of our community, state, and country as a whole. Only in this way does our precious American heritage become truly vital in terms of the problems of today. As good citizens and good Americans, we should remember always that in a democracy, freedom is everybody's job. And now for the answer to today's Believe It or Not quiz question. Now let's see how many of Bob Ripley's listeners were able to guess the answer to the question, what war was fought in India because of Greece? Well, that hint you gave us at the beginning of the program didn't help much. We know the Greece you're talking about is not the country Greece, no. but I can't imagine a war being fought over lubricating Greece. <laughs> One was fought, believe it or not. The war was the famous Indian mutiny of 1857. Well, where does the Greece come in? Well, the war was fought because the native Indian regiments discovered that the ammunition which the British supplied them was greased with cow fat to prevent it from rusting. Yes. And since the cow is India's most sacred animal, the natives were enraged enough to rise in a long and terrible rebellion. Yes, sir, a war was fought in India over Greece, believe it or not. And that takes us down to curtain time. Uh, what's Bob Ripley's famous farewell today? When Bob Ripley visited the bio country of Louisiana, where today's dramatic sketch took place, he was invited to a dinner of delicious shrimp and rice in the home of a wealthy Creole built on stilts high over the marshes. That night, his host saluted Bob with a toast spoken in French. Bob makes that toast his wish to his listeners today. Here's its translation. May your fate be as bright as a mirror. May your lucky star glisten like the purest water. And may you live on golden stilts forever. Believe it or not. Tune in again tomorrow at this same time, ladies and gentlemen, when we'll be back with more pages from the radio sketchbook of Bob Ripley, including the amazing sketch of the chicken that was worth $10 million. The Believe It or Not show was dramatized for radio by George Lefferts and Clarice Ross. Dramatized oddities from the famous drawing board of Bob Ripley are heard over most of these stations every day. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.